We begin today the Gemara on Dav Gimel Amad Aleph, the very first line at the top of the page. The Gemara here continues explaining the halach of the Mishnah, Hashutfin, Sheratzu, Lasis, Mechitza, Bechotzer. The Shutfin that want to build a Mechitza in a Chotzer. So, what is the meaning of the word Mechitza? So, on the first Lashon the Gemara brought here, it, it proved it from a, from a Braisa, that the word Mechitza means a partition or a wall. And what it's saying is that when you have these partners, only if they agree to build the, the wall are they obligated to put up this wall between them when they're dividing the property. If they don't want, they don't have to put up the wall. They divide the property without a wall. And the reason is because the fact that they're going to now be totally exposed to each other and that one is seeing the other, and this is what the Gemara refers to as Hezekiria, the fact that you're exposed, there's a damage by that. Lo Yishmei Hezek. It's not a damage and there's no Takana to put up a wall. That's what the Mishnah says, Ratsu, after they want it. So the Gemara brings a second opinion, the second version, that explains the word Mechitza in the Mishnah differently, which was already mentioned before in the Gemara. So there was another version of how to understand the word Mechitza in the Mishnah. So Omri La, they said as follows. So Vrua, that when they learned the Mishnah and they saw the word Mechitza, they thought to say, what does the word Mechitza mean? My Mechitza plukta. The word Mechitza means that they want to divide. They want to divide this property that they're living, this, this chotza, this courtyard that they're living in together. And the source for this is, that the people, they were, the, the half of them, the division of them was as follows. So we see the word mechitze, mechitzas means to divide. So if so, according to this, what's the halacha that's going to come out from the Mishnah? The kivin, the ratzu, as soon as they agree that we should divide this, this chotza that we own in partnership, and now, what do we do? Bainin Esakai. So the Mishnah says they agreed to divide. They didn't agree to put up a wall, but as soon as they agreed to divide, Bainin Esakai Sulbal Karcha. The Mishnah goes on to say that they're going to be forced to. This is a Takana of Chazal. They must put up a wall. Why? Alma, from this I see, Hezekiria Shmei Hezek. The fact that they are now living side by side as neighbors and one sees the other, so this is a damage and you must put up a wall to give the other person privacy. That's what you learn out according to this version of the Mishnah. Now the Gemara asks, according to this version, the Eime, my Mechitza good. Why shouldn't we say that the term Mechitza here does not mean that they decided, they agreed to divide, but they agreed to put up a wall? And like we said before, only if they agreed to put up a wall do they have to. The Tanan, and as we learned, the Tanya, as we learned in Abraise, quoted before already, where do we see that the word Mechitza means a wall? Mechitza Sakarim Shanifritza. The wall, the partition in a vineyard, which is near a field, a grain field, that was broken down. So so the one that owns the grain field tells the one that owns the vineyard, put up the wall again. It's your responsibility to put up this wall. Nifritzov, it breaks again. Aymelay tells him to put it up yet again. If the Balakerem gave up on it, he didn't put it up. This will cause that it will grow together and will become Kilayim. And the Balakaran that should have put up this wall, it's going to be his responsibility, the, the damage that happened here. So in this Mishnah or Braisa, we see that the term Mechitza, Mechitza Sakere, means a wall. Not, a, not, a, not dividing. Over there, the point is not dividing. Over there, you need a wall to prevent the uh, Kalayan. And according to that Pshat, the time the Ratzu. The only reason why they have to put up this wall is because they agree to put up the wall. If they don't agree to put up the wall, we can't obligate them to build this wall. And according to this, Alma Hezekriya Lav Shmei Hezek. And the reason we can't obligate them to put up the wall is because the Hezekriya, the damage, is not considered to be a damage. So it's, it's only with their agreement. So therefore the Gemara is acting, mm-hmm. trying to understand according to this version, why are we saying that Mechitza means of division and not a wall, a partition? Answers the Gemara, because if, they, if that's the Pshadir, Ihachi Bainan Esa when the Mishnah goes on to say that when they agree to put up a mechitza, and if you would say mechitza means a wall, then it goes on to say bainin esa kaiso that they build a wall. It should have said bainin oisai mi bayale. It just mentioned the word mechitza. Mechitza means a wall. So then when it says shutven sheratzu lasis mechitza, should go on to say what do you do bainin oisai? They build that mechitza that we just spoke about. Why does it say bainin es ha kaiso that they build a kaiso? What's this new lotion of kaiso? And why does it have to even mention kaiso after it already says mechitza that means a wall? So therefore, the Gemara says elamai. So what are you going to say going back to the pshat that we said here? Plukta. That what this refers to is that they agree, they decide, they decided together we're going to divide this property that we own together in partnership. Ihachi. But if so, the question is sheratzu lasais mechitza. The Mishnah says that they agreed to divide. 
Shadotsu lachzais mi boyale, the right uh, expression should be lachzais, not mechitza, similar to the word mechza saeda. That's, that's the right, grammatically, it's more correct to say lachzais than to say lasais mechitza, to build a, 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 to build a mechitza. It's, it's to divide, not to build a mechitza. And says the Gemara, this expression of the Mishnah, lasais mechitza is kedam riyinshi. This is the way people speak. When you want to divide, one approaches the other, he says, Ta navet plukta. Come, let's make a division. So the Gemara, the Mishnah here is using the terminology that's not usual in the way you write things, but in the, in the terminology of speaking, this is the way people say, let's make a division. So therefore it uses this term of lasais mechitza. But the Gemara has another question on this. V'i hezek shmei hezek. If you're saying, according to this opinion, that hezekriye shmei hezek, meaning that they must build a wall. That's not, there's no rotsen for that. That's a takon of chazal that they must put up a wall to not, in order not to see, in order not to damage the other person with hezekriye. So if so, over here, what are we talking about? That they are agreeing to divide. But the question is, ma'ir yerotsu. Why is the Mishnah saying that these partners could only divide this courtyard if they agree? Afil aloy rotsu nami. Even without their, their agreement, they should also be dividing this property. The halacha, usually by shutfin is, as we'll see later in the pedic is, any time shutfin own anything in partnership, at any time, any of the partners could decide that I want out from this partnership. And he could decide to split. So over here in the Mishnah, when it says that they decided to split, why they decided? Any partner could come and force his partner that we're, we're, we're stopping the partnership. So what's the ratzu in the Mishnah here? What the Mishnah is talking about is a chotzer, a courtyard that's so small that there's no din chalukah for this. As Rashi mentioned already before, we'll see later in the Mishnah here, that in order for there to be a din chalukah, it has to be at least eight amas. And which will then, after you'll divide, each one will get four amas, which is a minimum amount of space that you could use it comfortably. Mm-hmm. But if it's less than that, then one partner cannot force the other to divide. Then, if they'll agree, only if they'll agree, then you could divide. And that's what our Mishnah is talking about when it says that it was uh, only with their rotsen do they divide, because it's a very, very small courtyard. Okay, so it says the Gemara, so what, what does that mean? What are we learning out here from our Mishnah? For who did rotsu? In such a case, when it's such a small courtyard, only if they agree, that's when you divide. So it's my kamash mulon. What's the chiddush in this mishnah? The chiles, but in chaluka, that if there's if it's so small that there's no din that one could force the other to divide this and to, to separate. Kiratsu palgi. So only if they agree, that's when you divide. But that this halacha tanina, we learned already in the mishnah that says here later clearly this halacha and, 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 and this further in the pedik. What does the Mishnah there say? A Messiah, when do we say that any partner could force his partner to divide the property? Bizman, She'en Shneim, Reitzim. Oh, one second, sorry. The Mishnah there is saying, A Messiah, when do I say when it's too small and you cannot force your uh, partner to divide? That's if they don't agree. If they both agree, then I fill a Mikan, even if it's smaller than the size of eight Amis, where each one will get four and four, you can divide. So the Mishnah there clearly later says this halacha about the uh, property which has a din chalukah, it's large enough, and a property that's too small that you need their uh, agreement for it. So why is the Mishnah here starting with this halacha and saying, Ashutfin sherotzu lasis mechitze, that only if rotzu, then you divide. And says the Gemara, Ime hasam, if it was just a Mishnah that it says later about this, Hava mina, I would think to say, Afilo pachis mikan, that yes, true, even a property that's very small, so if they agreed to divide, then they divide this property. But how? How do they divide it? They divide it just with a marker, just with some pegs in the ground or some reeds in the ground that marks the border, but they don't have to put up a wall. And that's even though we said that that once you divide, there's a takana sachamim, that you must put up a wall to prevent the hezekriya. But maybe I would have said, when does that apply in a case where the property was large enough and one could force the other to divide? So over there, once you divide, you have to put up a wall. But in this case, because they're only dividing with an agreement and it's such a tiny property, so the partner that uh, agreed to divide can come and turn to his partner and say, I only agreed to divide such a small property on condition that we're not going to be following that Takanas Chachamim to put up this wall here. It's such a t- tiny property. How are we going to use this? Now, in addition, you want to put up a wall. So I would think that he can come and say, even if they didn't spell that out clearly in their agreement, that I only agreed to divide on condition that we're not going to be putting up a wall here. 
So Kamash Malon Hacha Kaisel. That's why our Mishnah has to say here, even if it's such a small property, and they agree to divide. Once they agree to divide, you must put up a Kaisel. The Kana of Chachamim applies even to such a small property. If that's what this Mishnah is teaching here, say if so, Vilisni Ha. So let it only say this halacha regarding dividing such a small property and then putting up a wall. They are here, our Mishnah. And and it's not necessary for the Mishnah later here in this Patek to spell out this halacha about a small property that they could agree to divide and you put up a wall. It says already everything here. It says here actually more than what it says in the Mishnah later. And says the Gemara, you're right, the Mishnah later, Taka did not have to repeat that halacha. The main reason it said it was for the Seifa. Seifa, it's the there, the main point that it's being mechadish, what it says in the end of that Mishnah. The Kisvei HaKadosh, when it comes to Holy Scrolls, uh, Rashi says, a Tanakh and so on, that are, uh, the way, what we're talking about over here is, not a Seifa, the way we have it today, that's bound on pages, but we're talking about a scroll, <coughs> like a Seifa Teireh. So if two people own Kisvei HaKadosh in, in, in partnership, even if they both agree to cut it and to divide it, we're not, uh, you're not allowed to divide it. You don't divide that. You have to leave it together, the Tanakh, you leave it together as one. That, that's the main Chiddush of what that Mishnah is coming to say over there. Okay, now here in the Gemara, there's a Lishna Achrina. This Lishna Achrina, so from Rashi, it's pretty clear that he wasn't good as this. And the Lishna Achrina is, is saying basically the exact same thing as the Gemara itself says here. It's just a little bit in a different order. So we're not going to learn the Lishna Chirina. Let's go to the continuation of the Gemara after the parentheses that uh, continues discussing here the Pshat and the Mishnah. Mm-hmm. It's about uh, 10 lines further down. B'may Okimta. B'may Okimta. I'm not sure. How, do, do they, in, over here, they bring the Lishna Chirina? They translate the whole Lishna Chirina? Yeah, they translate the whole thing, but they have it in the... But it's... Uh, it's, it's, it's in front yeah, Rashi wasn't guided this. It's pretty clear. And um, most of Shainam are not guided as this. It's, it's not... Not a different, a new, a new content that doesn't say in the Gemara. It's just a little bit of a different order. But it's Mamish the same Indian. Okay, the Maya Kimta. That's where we're continuing. Not at how, where is it over here? Three, three. Huh? Three, eight, three. Yeah. Okay, the Maya Kimta right there. Okay. Now the Maya Kimta lemasnisen. How did we explain <clears throat> our Mishnah according to the second the Lashon here? B'shem in chaluka. That this is a property that's very small, and therefore, if they're going to be dividing it, it's only if they agree. If so, if this is such a small property and they have to agree to divide, what did the Mishnah say? They agree to divide and then you have to build a kaisel. But Kiratsu, if they agree to this, my have What uh, power does this agreement have? How, how is this agreement binding? They can just retract from this agreement. How can the Mishnah say once they agree, so then you divide and you have to build a kaisel? What power does any agreement have if there's nothing that's binding you here? According, uh, one second. According to Rashi, this question of the Gemara is not only on this Lashon here, we're going to get to the small property that they agreed to divide, but the Gemara is asking this question according to the first version as well. According to the first version that it said that they could force each other to divide because it's a big property. Elamai now, they have an agreement to build a kaisel, even if there's no obligation to build a kaisel. And the Gemara is asking on that opinion as well, just because they agreed to build a kaisel, they have to build it. So they agreed. So why can't, why can't any of them back out from this agreement? That's Rashi's prat. Other Rishayim Taisus disagrees. It's only asking on the second Lashon, but before that's how Rashi explained this. So the Gemara answers, Omer Avasi, Omer Rabbi Yechenen, Shekana Miyodam. It wasn't just a rotz, it wasn't just an agreement, it was an agreement with a Kenyan. What kind of Kenyan are we talking about regarding such things? You usually use the Kenyan chalipin, which is a handkerchief, you lift up the handkerchief, and that is to solidify this agreement that it's something that's binding, that they have to uh, divide, or according to the first uh, Lashen, that they have to build the Kaisal. The Gemara continues and asks, and the continuation of the Gemara here is going to be all according to the uh, second Lashen. So even if they did make this Kenyan chalipin, my have how does that help? It's a Kenyan that is obligating you for words, which means that all the Kenyan is doing is it's obligating you for an action that you say you're going to do. There is nothing physical that the Kenyan pertains to. <clears throat> Any Kenyan, in order for it to take effect, a Kenyan can acquire something. You can acquire a property, you can acquire an object, but if you say, I'm going to do so and so, I'm going to do an action, and then you make a Kenyan to obligate yourself to do that action, there's nothing that the Kenyan is taking effect upon. It's just your words that you're going to do a certain action. So how does this Kenyan have any, any effect here? 
So as I mentioned, regarding the first Lashen, the answer is that the Kenyan it pertains to a physical wall. There's the physical, there's the materials of the wall, and that's what the Kenyan is, that here, these materials of the wall is what I'm, what I'm providing here for this wall. And the other provides his part to the wall. But according to the second Lashen, that we're just talking about the property that's here, the Gemara is asking that, that, that what they're saying is that, that we're making a Kenyan that we're going to divide this property, that I'm going to be here and you're going to be there. But it's, there's, there's, not, there's nothing physical here that, is, is that the Kenyan pertains to. They already own this property. It's just a matter of dividing it. So what exactly is the Kenyan on? So the Gemara answers, no, the Kenyan is, This itself, even though they talk to own the property already, but they're dividing, and each one is choosing their side of what's going to be theirs, so then each one is making a Kenyan beruchais. This one is going to be the Mizuch side, the other one on the Maidav side. So there is a Kenyan that's, that, is, that does pertain to a one side of each, for each of the property, and therefore it's not just an action. It is something that pertains to the physical part of the property that he's getting, and therefore that Kenyan does take effect. Ravashi Omar, Ravashi says, different, no, Kagoin. It's not only a Kenyan, like we mentioned, the Kenyan of Chalipin, regarding the division, but it's more than that. Each one of them went into the, his part of the property and made a chazake. He established a chazake by digging there, doing something there in that part of the property that, that, that it becomes his. So there's a real, real physical kinyan in the property and therefore that it takes effect. This chalukah takes effect. So even though the Mishnah just said the term ratzu, but the ratzu in the Mishnah means a ratzu with a proper kinyan and therefore that's uh, what brings the division. Going back to the Mishnah, the Mishnah spoke about the various different kinds of walls that could be built in this property. Makim Shenagu Livno is Chulu. So the Mishnah mentioned there's a Gvil, there's a Gazis, Kfisin, and Levenin. Mari is going to go through explaining what these various <coughs> different kinds of materials are. Gvil, what is the Gvil? Gvils are stones, but they're Avne, the Loi Meshafia. These are stones that are not chiseled, they're not uh, carved out and chiseled to be nice, beautiful stones, but they're just basically the stones raw as they are. Gazis is Avne de Mishafia. These are stones that are chiseled, that are, and therefore the, the Gvil is one tefach wider. And the, the Gazis, which is chiseled out, is going to be a tefach, tefach smaller. The Mechsev, and we see this in the Pasuk where it speaks about uh, building the Beis Amikdosh, or maybe it talks about building the house of Shleim Melech. Kalela Avonim Yukodais, these are spresh, precious stones, Kemidas Gazis, like the size of Gazis. And over there, the Gazas refers to these stones that were chiseled to be, make them beautiful stones. And the Mishnah said it is Kfisin. What are Kfisin? Archi. Kfisin are half bricks. Now these half bricks, you lay them, you lay two, si- two, two half bricks side by side, and then you, uh, you uh, attach them together with cement in between. That's the Kfisin. Levenin. What are Levenin? Livni. Le- uh, they're, they're bricks. They're full bricks. They're smaller bricks, but they're bricks. That's the four different kinds of uh, materials that are used to build this wall. So he asks Ravashi about this. How do we know to translate these materials in this way? Mimai, how do you know to say the gvil are avni de loimishafyaninu? That the gvil are these stones that are not chiseled. And therefore, vahai tefach yaseda. The gvil, as the Tzad the Mishnah, is sixth fachim wide which is one tefach wider than the gazes, the chiseled stones, which is only one t- uh, five tochim. And so now the extra tefach of the gvil stones is lomursha the karnese, the protrusion of the edges of the stone, because it's not, it's not chiseled. How do you know that's the pshat? Dilma, maybe you should say <laughs> that what's the gvil? Palge the gazesu. Maybe the gvil is when you have two stones that are laid side by side, so you take that gaze stone, and if it's half, two half gaze stones that you lay side by side, and then why is it, so if it's two halves, so why is it one tefach wider than the gazes? Because the high tefach is seder. The extra tefach is here, lebeini orvi. It's, it's in between the two, the two halves of the tefach, of, of the gaze stone in order to attach them. Kedekam rinon, similar to what we say regarding kfisin, regarding the bricks. That what are kfisin? Archi, it's, it's half bricks. And levenin are livni, they're full bricks. And the high tefach is seder. The extra tefach that there is for the kvisin is because lebeni yorvi. It's for the cement between the two half bricks that are laid side by side. So maybe we should say the same shot for the gvil, that it's two half gazes with the cement in between. Oh, malay, Sarabashi answered, according to your reasoning, according to your question. Kvisin archi. When it says in the, when we explain that when it says in the Mishnah kvisin, it means half bricks and with the cement in between. Minola, how do we know that that's what it means? 
Maybe, maybe it means something else. I'm not assuming going to go through this in the opposite way. But how, how do you know that that's the pshat of the word kfisim? So Ella, the answer to that is gemara gemiri la. The gemara learns this from a tradition. This is, we know that this is the translation of what the word kfisim is. Kfisim is half a bricks. Half a bricks with cement in between. So the same thing here as well. Gvil nami avne deloy meshafia. The fact that the word gvil means the unchiseled stones, and the reason why it's a tefach wider is because of the edges that stick out. Gemara gemiri lo. It's a tradition that we have about this. Here the Gemara goes through the same discussion, but <coughs> the opposite regarding the kfisin. Others say that he asked them as follows. How do you know the high kfisin archininu? How do you know to translate that you know kfisin means half a bricks and the high tefach yiseide and the extra tefach that kfisin is wider than the levenim is lebeni yorvi. It's because of the cement that are between the two half bricks. Dilme, maybe I should say, my kfisin, what are kfisin? They're avni duloy meshafin. Avni or others are greatest here. Um, le, 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 Leveni. They're bricks. They're also bricks. And they're full bricks, not half of bricks. But they're bricks that are not smoothed out, they're not chiseled out properly. And the high tefach yiseide, and these kfisin, the reason why there's an extra tefach to these bricks is Lamorsha de Karnasa, because of the edges that are protruding. Kedekamrinon gvil, similar to what we translated regarding the gvil, the stones that are avni de loy mishafian, and they're unchiseled stones, and gazes is avni de mishafian, the gazes is the chiseled stones. And the high tefach said, and there we said that the extra tefach is the morsha the karnasa because of the protrusion of the edges. So Amale, and he answered him as we explained before, according to your reasoning, according to your question, Givil, Avne Deloimishafian, the fact that the Gvil are these unchiseled stones, how do you know that? Minolan. Hello, the answer is Gemara Gemiri Law. It's a tradition that we learn, that we know that this is the Pshat, so Hachanami, so the same thing regarding the Kfisin, Gemara Gemiri Law. It's a tradition, we know this is the Pshat. Omar Abaye, Abaye says regarding the kfisin, which are the two half bricks that have cement in between, and therefore it uh, keeps them together. And Shma Mino, Kol Beni Orvi, from here we see that when you, when you lay bricks this way, and you have to have in between cement, so how do you build a wall that it should be a sturdy wall? It has to be tefach. You have to put a tefach of cement in between to hold them together. Hanimili, but when is that the case? Bitina, if you're actually using cement. Avul Berichse, if what's holding the two layers of bricks Together is richse, which is gravel, then boy tfei. So a tefach is not going to be enough. You're going to need even thicker than a tefach of gravel to hold it together. Vikadamri, others say that he said different. Ha nimili, when is a tefach going to be the amount? You need so much. You need a tefach in order to hold it together. That's if it's berichse, if it's gravel. Avo betina, if you're using cement to hold the two layers of bricks together, then like boy kulahai. Then you don't need a tefach, you don't need that much, even, even uh, not as thick will be good enough to hold it together. Okay, now the Gemara here is going to ask, base, but here we're talking all about the various different materials used for the wall regarding the thickness of the wall. Right? So now the Gemara is going to ask, what's the height of the wall? We mentioned already before in the Beis Amit Beis, the height of this wall that has to be built in a courtyard in order to separate it, it shouldn't be Hezekriya, is four Amas high. So now the Gemara asks, based on this, the Memre, shall we say, the Begazes, that when it comes to the stones that are Gazes, the, the, the chiseled stones, that and now how wide is the Gazes wall? It's five Tvachim wide. So should I say that in the structure of a wall, that the rule is that Kol Dalet Ames Goiva, if the wall is going to be four Ames high, Ihava Pusya Chamisha Koi, if it's going to have the thickness of five Tvachim, it'll be sturdy enough to stand. And Eloi, if not, Loi Koi. And if it's not going to be five um, five uh, Tvachim uh, thick, that is, Loi Koi, then the wall is not going to stand. Uh, this, this, uh, if you think about it, a, a wall that's only four Amas high, it's not that high. It's six, six feet high. Uh, you need a wall to be five Tvachim thick, which is pretty thick, in order for that wall to be able to stand. Is, is this really the case? And the Gemara asks, from where? From the Beis HaMikdash. Over there we see that there was a wall that was much taller than this, it was also the, the, the stones of the Beis Amikdash that they built. They built the stones from chiseled stones, from the beautiful chiseled stones. And over there, the, the wall was much taller and it wasn't that thick. Because for her, I'm a There's nothing between the stones. I'm sure they have it. No, no, no. It's, it's stones. Without, we're not talking over here about cement in between. We're talking there about stones. That's how the Beis Amikdash <coughs> was built. Now the Amatraxin, what's the Amatraxin? This is the wall that separated the Kaidish and the Kaidish Akadoshim in the in the first place on Mikdash. Taisa says the word Traxin means to close off, Trak means to close off, and Sin is Meloshin Sinai, which goes on the Luchais that were inside the Kaidish Akadoshim that uh, we got from Sinai. That's one Shah Taisa says. 
So this wall, this Amatraxin, the Havoi Goiva, Gavoya that is, plus an Amasa. It was 30 Amas high. And Velohavia Pustia Elishis Pushchi. And its width was only one Amma, which is six Tfachim. And the Kam, and the wall uh, stood. According to the measurement that we're saying, that for four Amas high, you have to have five Tfachim thick. So this wall that's 30 Amas high, it should, it should be an extremely thick wall in order to. For it to stand, if you if you're gonna if you're going to uh, go according to that percentage, and says the Gemara, even the Ikke Tefach is When it comes to that wall, once there's <laughs> one Tefach that it's thicker instead of five Tefachim, it's six Tefachim, so it's extra large st- stones. So koi, it could stand even a very high wall. So what the Gemara is saying is, you don't constantly have to add more thickness for every additional ama of the height of the wall. You're going to have to keep on making the wall thicker and thicker and thicker. You get to a certain point the thickness, which is in this case six tefachim ama, that that's thick enough that you can build it even extremely high. In fact, the Gemara, if that's the case, would be mikdash any in the second base of mikdash. My time will have a amatraxin. Why, in the second base of Mikdash, did they not build this Amatraxin again to separate between the Kaidish and the Kaidish Akadoshim? Instead, in the second base of Mikdash, they had two curtains, two Pareichais, and there was a, 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 a Tefach in between. The Kaidin Kain used to, Kain Godly used to walk in between and go inside. Why didn't they build this wall again? Over there, in the second base of Mikdash, it was actually higher. Over here, in, in, in Arash, it says that it was that this uh, Pareiches was 100 Amas tall. And other, others say, say that the version is supposed to be that it was 40 Amas tall instead of 30 Amas like it was in the uh, first base of Mikdash. But the question of the Gemara is, if we're saying that it could be very tall, because once it's already an Amas thick, you can build very tall. So even in the second base of Mikdash, they should build the same wall, even if it's going to be taller. So the Gemara answers, no, Kikoi Betlasen. When it's this thick of uh, an ame, so then, yeah, you could build a lot taller, but up to 30 ames. Tfei loikoi, but more than 30 ames, it will not stand. So in the second base of Mikdash, it was 40 ames high, so they couldn't build the, the wall, so they had to put up two pareiches, uh, two, two curtains. Now, from where do we know that the second base of Mikdash was taller than the first base of Mikdash? The the Pasuk says, the, 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 the glory of the second base of Mikdash will be greater than the first. In Rabbi Shmuel, Bamir Lerav Yechen and Rabbi Laza, they argued about what the greatness of the second base of Mikdash was. Chadama Bebinyan, one says that it was in the structure, it was taller, it was 100 or 120 Amasai. Chadama Bishonim. The other says that in years, it was, it, was, it was 10 years longer because the first base of Mikdash stood for 410 years and the second base of Mikdash stood for 420 years. And the Gemara says, V'yisulaha and V'yisulaha. They're both right, that the second Beis HaMikdash was greater both in the number of years and in the height of the structure of the physical Beis HaMikdash. The Rebbe brings this in and explains that, that uh, the godless of the second Beis HaMikdash, you would expect maybe that the godless would be Be'ikr B'negeh to the Ruchnius. And actually the fact is that B'negeh to the Ruchnius, the second Beis HaMikdash, there was less, uh, the, the, the Nisim that were in the first Beis HaMikdash weren't in the second Beis HaMikdash, the Aram wasn't there. But the godless is Benigayat, the Gashmias, which is Mokkem and Zman. Mokkem and Zman, space and time, defines the existence of the world. The main Maila of the second base of Mikdash is not Benigayat to Ruchnias. The main Maila is Benigayat to the, to the Gashmias. That was the Maila of the second base of Mikdash, that it was more, the, uh, the godly revelation that was there was more in the, in the Metzias of the world itself. But true Benigayat to the level of revelation, Mitzad Maila, the first base of Mikdash had a Maila over that. And the Gemara continues the discussion. Why they didn't build a, uh, a wall separating the Kaidish and the Kaidish Akadashim. So, what did we say? Because the wall was too tall. You could only build up to 30 Amas, but not higher than that. So, build a maximum, build a height of 30 Amas, a wall. And the Idoch, Navit Perechis. And then the rest, that you can't build a wall, so then that you add a curtain there. Answers the Gemara, no, because Ki Koi Tlosan Amas, this that we said, that even if you have a wall that's just one Amma thick, It'll stand, even if it's 30 amas tall. So the reason is, Nami Agav Tikro Maziva. That's because it's attached to the, to the roof with plaster. And that's also what, what uh, mm-hmm. keeps it stable. But over here, so Hava, that's what it is. Hava Koi, then it stands. But Loi Tikre O Maziva, Loi Hava Koi. But without, in the second base of Mikdash, you're going to say, build a wall the same height of 30 amas. But then on top of that, you're going to have to add a curtain and it's not going to have the strength to, to be stable with the roof and the Maziva and the plaster that holds it. So then Loi Koi, it's, it's Loi Hava Koi, it's not going to stand. But the Gemara still asks, there's still another option. The Levit Ma the Efshe Bebinyan. Okay, so you can't build it 30 amas high. But why, why not build a wall at all? They should, they should build whatever height possible a wall. And 
and the rest, whatever they can, they should add and build a curtain. Amar Abayas, Abay answers, Nakimiri, we have a tradition, Ikulu Bibinyan, the wall that you build to separate the Kodesh of the Kodesh Kedoshim, either it has to be all a structure, a wall that you build, Ikulu Bipareiches, and if the, you can't build a wall, so then it has to be all just a curtain. Ikulu Bibinyan, either it has to be all a wall, Mimiktosh, like it was in the first place in Mikdosh. Ikulu Bipareiches, or it has to be all a curtain, Mimishkan, as we see in the Mishkan, that there was a Pareiches. So this, uh, now, you don't need any more of the answers that the Gemara said before about the... Over here, the Gemara is saying that once you can't build a full wall all the way up to the top, so then it, you, they, they were forced to build instead a parechis, a two parechis, and that they put there. Okay, now the Gemara goes back to our Mishnah. The Mishnah gave the various different measurements of the wall. So the Gemara asks on this, the Shiloh was asked about these measurements in the Mishnah. Hain visidon. These measurements the Mishnah is saying, is it the thickness of these walls together with plaster that they would put on the walls in order for the wall to be insulated or to be protected from rain or whatever it is, they would add plaster on the walls. Is it including that as well? The measurement the Mishnah is saying is the measurement of the actual stones or bricks. This is whether it's six, five, four, three, but then when you add the plaster, it's going to be actually even thicker. Rav Nachman by Yitzchak, Rav Nachman Yitzchak says, Mistavre, it's logical to say, Hein visidon, that the measurement mentioned in the Mishnah is the wall together with the plaster. It's telling you the full measurement. The Yitzchakadaita, Hein beloisidon, because if the measurement that the Mishnah is saying is without the plaster that's added to these walls, so listen to the Shiurei. Let the Mishnah give you this uh, measurement as well. The Mishnah is telling you here the halacha, how much each partner has to contribute from his space and from his part of the wall. Why doesn't it give you the full amount if uh, there's additional thickness because of the plaster? So, Elolav, Shema Mino, so therefore we should say, Hein Vesidon. The measurement the Mishnah gives is the full measurement, the walls together with the plaster. Answers the Gemara, Loi. No, that's not necessarily a Raya, because Loi Lamei Malach, really I can tell you, Hein Beloi Sidon. The measurement the Mishnah says is without the plaster that you add. Wow, why doesn't the Mishnah specify it? Because Vikivin, the Loi, have a Tefach, because since that additional amount of the plaster is less than a Tefach, so Loi Tani. So the Mishnah doesn't mention that. Is that true? That if any, any amount that's less than a tefach, the Mishnah doesn't mention? But what the Mishnah does say, regarding the bricks, it says, Zen noisen tefach omechze, vezen noisen tefach omechze. Over there it mentions, each one is providing a tefach and a half. So it mentions an amount that's less than a tefach. And says the Gemara, that's not a, that's not a raya, because hosam chazil tarufi. Over there, each one is giving a half a tefach, which together combines to a full tefach. That's why it's being mentioned. But here, the plaster that you add to the wall, even the plaster that each one is going to add to his side of the wall, does not combine to a full tefach. So that amount the Mishnah doesn't mention. So therefore, our shaila remains, the measurements in the Mishnah, is it full measurement together with the sid, with the plaster, or is it, or is it without it? Toshimah, the Gemara says, let's bring a raya. Huh? The Vayim is with the Sid. No, again, what? The Vayim is with Sid. Well, there's the Sid that's uh, by the Kvisin, which is in between. There's the, there's the cement that's in between the two layers of bricks. Here the Gemara is talking about a plaster or cement that they put on the outside of the walls in order to protect the walls. Is the Mishnah including that as well or not? No. Toshimah, the Gemara says, let's bring a raya from the Mishnah that it says in Erevin. The Mishnah there talks about when you have to put up a, a, a beam, either you could have a beam on the side or a cross beam in order to create an Erev to separate, to be able to carry inside the alleyway. Hakairish Amru. What's the thickness of this cross beam that's used for this? Rachba, <coughs> the thickness of it is Kedei Lekabel Ariach, in order that you can place a, a half a brick on it. And Vaha Ariach, what is an Ariach? Chatsi Leveina Shel Gimel Tvachim. It's a half a brick of three Tvachim. So what do you see there? That this measurement of three Tvachim is only the measurement of the, of the brick itself. And not over there, there's no plaster. So if so, in our mission also, when it says the, the, the brick, it's the measurement just of the brick itself, and it does not include the, pl- the plaster. And says the Gemara, no, there's no raya from that. Why? Because over there, when it says this brick, it's, not, it's talking about a larger brick, and that's why that larger brick is three tfachim. In our Mishnah, it was talking about a smaller brick. And over here, this brick is less than three tfachim. Together with the plaster, it'll be full three tfachim. So our Mishnah, we could still say, means the size of three tfachim for a brick together with the plaster. And the Gemara proves this. They can ami. Diktani shel shloish tfachim. There, when it says a brick, it, it adds and says, which brick are we talking about? The larger brick, the brick of three tfachim. Miklal de So from that I understand that really the bricks, usually there are smaller bricks. 
So Shmami, you know, from that we see that in our Mishnah, when it says the bricks, it means the regular, the smaller bricks, and therefore the shear of three tfachim that it said in our Mishnah for the bricks is together with the plaster. Shmami, you know, that's a raya. Now, since the Gemara brought up the Beis HaMikdash, the Gemara here is going to discuss a halacha regarding a Beis HaKnesses, regarding a shul. Amar Rav Chista, Rav Chista said, Le'listed inish beiknishte, you're not allowed to demolish a shul, ad the bani beiknishte achriti, until you first build another shul first. You can't demolish a shul with the intention, with the plan to build a second shul. Hmm. And the Gemara will explain why not. But first you have to build another shul, and only then could you demolish the shul that's here. Now, Ikedamri, there are those that say that the reason is Mishum Shiyasa, because we're afraid that then they may be negligent and not end up building the shul. Asher actually says, it doesn't mamish me that they'll be negligent, but what it means is that they, there may be some onus that will happen, that uh, they'll have uh, a, a hard time collecting the funds, and, uh, and then they won't uh, go ahead and build another shul. Okay, and which, and what, what this means is that maybe they'll have a very hard time, there'll be an onus, and then once the onus will happen, Later on, they'll just get lazy and then they'll be negligent. But the Gemara is not saying that we're afraid that there'll be an actual negligence from the beginning. Later on, they'll end up becoming negligent because it was so hard, it was impossible in the beginning. That's one reason. Others say, The reason is, not because we're concerned that they may not rebuild the shul, but because in the time, in the time of the construction of the new shul, you, you demolish the old shul, they don't have a place where to daven. So, so therefore you have to first build another place where they can daven, and, and, and only then could you demolish the old shul. My mm-hmm. what's the practical difference between these two explanations? Yeah. The difference is the Ikebe If while they're building the new shul, so they already want to demolish the first shul they had, but there is another shul here in the city that they can daven in, in between. That's the girsa we have here in our Gemara. According to Taisus, the girsa in the Gemara here is not, you don't even need another shul for this as long as there is another place. Ike, the other, other girsa here is Ike Duchtel as long as there's another location, let's say in someone's private home or in some temporary place, they have another place where to daven. So that there's, there's no concern about the fact that during the time of construction, there won't be where to daven. <coughs> like Mother here brings, <coughs> Meremer or Mazutre, both Meremer and Mazutre, in the place where they lived, Sosri or Banu, they would demolish and rebuild or they would uh, remodel or do, do construction, Bekaita, for a shul that was used in the summer, Besisve. In the winter time, meaning, in, in according to the way Rashi understands this Gemara, they had they, they didn't have what we have today: air conditioning, heating system. So they had two different shoals. They had one shoal that was built with a tall ceiling with a lot of windows, so there should be a lot of uh, air and circulation. That was for the summer. And then they had a different shoal that was built with a lower ceiling with very thick walls, properly insulated. So they, they used these two shoals in, in the summer and in the winter. So during the summer, they would uh, do the construction or to fix. The, the summer shul besisfe in the winter when they when they were using the winter shul so during the summer they would do the fixing for the or even if they had to demolish the the, the summer shul and ubana besisfe the winter shul the kaita during the summer when they were davening in the summer shul they would do construction in the uh, in the winter shul and so simply according to what we said before as long as you have another place where to daven while you're doing construction on the shul it's okay so here because in the, the summer they're using the summer shul so they would uh, do the construction for the winter shul. Amalei Ravina le Ravashi. Ravina says to Ravashi, Gavu zuzi yomechsi. How about if they already collected the funds and the funds are sitting here? So my, what's the halacha then? Should we say that once they already have the money, now we're not concerned that they're not going to rebuild the shul and uh, according to the version, the, the, the reason that we said before. So maybe at this point, they could already demolish the shul even before they build another shul. Amalei, so he says, no, that's not enough because Dilmi Misrama lo Pidni Shvuyim v'yavilohu. Maybe this funds that they have here, a case of Pidni Shvuyim to redeem a yid from captivity will come up and they're going to have, and that's the greatest mitzvah, and they're going to have to take this money that was collected for the shul and instead use it for the Pidni Shvuyim. And then in the end, they're they going to be lazy to go and collect funds again. How, so the Gemara asks, how about Shrigi Livni, the bricks that are sitting here in rows, they're ready, the bricks were already bought. And the hodri hodri, and the, the planks of wood that are needed for this, or the, uh, the boards that they need for the shul, the mechsik shuri, and the, the, the beams that are needed for the shul are already all here. They already brought, bought all the materials for the shul. My, what's Allah then? Are they allowed to demolish the old shul? Amalei, so, so he answered, no, even in such a case, you're not allowed. Zimni de Misraim elu If they'll have a case where they have to use money for pidin shvoyim, what are they going to do? Mizavni, they're going to sell all these materials. Viyavi and they're going to give the money for the pidin shvoyim. 
So he asks him, if that's the case, so even if you already built the shul, you shouldn't be allowed to demolish the old shul, because maybe they'll sell this shul for the Pidyan Shvoyim. Taisa says, the Gemara <laughs> means to ask that the halacha should be not until they actually started davening the shul, you should not be allowed to demolish the old shul. Amalei, <laughs> so for that Ravashi answered, no, dear say the inshi loy mizmini. Once you have a person that owns a home, you don't sell the home. So over here, for sure, when it comes to a shul, once they already built the shul, they're not going to sell the shul. We're not concerned that they're going to end up without a shul. And the Gemara goes back to this halacha that we said, that you're not allowed to demolish a shul until, and in order to build another shul. You first have to build a new shul. V'loy that wasn't said, El That's only if this shul that you need to demolish, it's not something where you didn't see a crack or something that's in the shul that it's... it's it's a danger that it's, you have to you have to build a new shul for this reason. But to you, if the reason why they have to build a new shul is because the old shul is falling apart, they saw already a crack in the shul, then sasri ubani. They're allowed to demolish the old shul even before they build a new shul. Kihad Ravashi, like the case was with Ravashi, Chazabat to Yua Beknishta the Mosa Machasya, he saw a crack in the shul of the city Mosa Machasya, and he went and he demolished that shul even before they rebuilt the new shul. And what did he do in order to be sure that they're going to build a new shul? For Ayle, the Ayle that is, Lopuriye Lahasam, he brought his bed into that place where they were building the new shul. He didn't remove his bed. He slept there, he lived there. And it was un- dis- uncomfortable for him to, to be in such a place. And, but he, wa- he was there at the Maskele Shvichi. Until they finished the shul to the last finishing touches, they put up the, uh, the, the gutters uh, for, for the rain, for the rainwater to go down. And that, that's how he was asleep, slept there, and he lived inside the shul. <coughs> There's a discussion here in the Rishayim, interesting, the Taisus over here discussed <coughs> regarding sleeping inside a shul. Even, even in this case where they were building the shul, and <coughs> seemingly they weren't even davening there yet, but Taisa has all discussion about whether you're allowed to sleep in a shul. It says you're not allowed to sleep in a shul. Taisa says that he didn't bring his bed mamish in the shul itself. He put it in a side room. Other Rishayim say that over here, was, if, for the sake of building the shul, <coughs> for the sake of the mitzvah of building the shul, so you are allowed to sleep in the shul. There's different reasons that Rishayim say about this. I think Gemara talks about the, the Beis HaMikdash, based on this. Above the Ben Buttes, and now when it comes to the second Beis HaMikdash, so what happened in the time of the second base of Mikdash? At a certain point, so Hordis demolished the first base of the, the base of Mikdash that they built, and he rebuilt a beautiful, beautiful base of Mikdash, the Binyan of Hordis. So now, who's the one that gave that advice? It was Baba Ben Bote. O Baba Ben Bote. Heichi Aspile Eitzel Hordis. How did he advise Hordis, King Hordis, Le Mistere Le Beis Mikdash? to demolish the second Beis HaMikdash and, and to build in its place the beautiful Beis HaMikdash that Hordes built. But Rav Chiste said, You're not allowed to demolish a shul until you build a second shul. So how is he, how is he allowed to do this? The Mufarshim asked, in this case you can't ask a question because by, by the Beis HaMikdash there's only one location where you build the Beis HaMikdash. There's no option of building a second Beis HaMikdash somewhere else first before you demolish this one. But the, the Gemara is, uh, the, what the Gemara is asking over here is that he shouldn't have demolished the entire Beis Mikdash and rebuilt the second. He should have demolished it piece by piece and to, to build a, to build it in that way, but not to first all demolish it. So the Gemara says, based on what we said before, we could say Iba Yisayme to you Chazaba. Baba Ben Buddha saw that the, the structure of the Beis Mikdash, the second Beis Mikdash, had already cracks in it. So therefore, he said that in such a case, you're allowed to demolish it to build a new one. Or we could say, when it comes to a king that is going to be building, that's different. He's not going to retract from building it. Our concern before was he may be negligent and not build, but there's no concern regarding a king. If a king comes and says, I'm going to uproot this mountain, you can, do, you can rely on the fact that he's going to uproot the mountain, and he won't retract from this. So therefore, over here, Bapam Ben Buta relied on Hordas Amalaf that he's going to build a second base on Mikdash.